The US Air Force has announced that it's conducted the first captive carry flight test of the AGM 183A air launched rapid response weapon or ARRW. The test was conducted from a B-52H bomber. The weapon is expected to be integrated into B-52 in the future. According to an official Air Force statement, a B-52H carried a sensor-only version of the AGM-183A during the test, which occurred at Edwards Air Force Base in California on June 12, 2019. By captive flight, it meant that the missile remained attached to the bomber throughout the course of the flight. And by sensor-only version, it denoted that the missile had no warhead. The statement added, the test gathered data on drag and vibration impacts on the weapon itself and on the external carriage equipment of the aircraft, and stated that the test met all the assigned validation points. The statement noted, this type of data collection is required for all Air Force weapons systems undergoing development. The Air Force has not yet released any pictures. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes America's hypersonic AGM-183A air launched rapid response weapon. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank or aircraft and three days of premium account. An object is said to be hypersonic once they exceed speeds of Mach 5, that's five times the speed of sound. This is about 1,715 meters per second or 3,836 miles per hour or 6,174 kilometers per hour. There are currently two methods being applied to make hypersonic weapons. First is using a scramjet engine. The scramjet is an innovation on the ramjet. Ramjet engine can power flight to supersonic speeds, but scramjet can enable the missiles to reach hypersonic speeds. These engines have no moving parts, like the compressors and turbines used in the turbofan engines found on conventional jet planes. They rely on the huge pressure created by fast airflow into the engine to ignite the fuel and generate thrust. In this method, a rocket booster is used to accelerate the missile to hypersonic speed. Then the scramjet engine kicks in and enables the missile to fly at sustained hypersonic speed. Second is using hypersonic glide vehicle HGV. In this method, the system is launched to extremely high altitudes using intercontinental ballistic missile ICBM or an aircraft where it skips across the Earth's upper atmosphere and then glides back attaining hypersonic speed. Aero uses this approach and is actually an evolution of the DARPA TBG effort. As per DARPA, the system is expected to reach speeds of Mach 20 when it glides back to the target. Countries like Russia, China have been developing sophisticated layered air defense. These systems are difficult for traditional aircraft and missiles to penetrate. This is where hypersonic weapons come in. Their extreme speed and ability to fly an unpredictable path give them a high probability of penetrating the air defenses. They'll be very hard to track, let alone intercept. It's to be noted that traditional ballistic missiles also reach hypersonic speed when they descend down on the target, but they follow a predictable predefined parabolic path which could lead to possible interception by anti-ballistic missile defense systems. Hypersonic weapons will be suitable for neutralizing well-defended strategic military assets. Russia has claimed that it's already fielded a scramjet engine-based hypersonic missile named Kinzhal and is very close to having an operational hypersonic boost glide vehicle named Avangard. China is thought to be pursuing hypersonic weapons as well. 
On June 12, 2019, India claimed to have test-fired a hypersonic weapon. The system is reported to have used a modified Agni-1 short-range ballistic missile as the booster. It's currently not clear if the test met all pre-laid parameters. With the Aero test, the U.S. is taking steps to field its own air-launched hypersonic weapon. In 2017, Lockheed Martin won the contract to begin aero development. The company stated that it wanted to meet the desired production targets within three years. Testing and optimization of the weapon is expected to carry on till 2021. Will Roper, the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics, said in a statement about the flight test, We set out an aggressive schedule with aero. Getting to this flight test on time highlights the amazing work of our acquisition workforce and our partnership with Lockheed Martin and other industry partners. He added, We're using the rapid prototyping authorities provided by Congress to quickly bring hypersonic weapon capabilities to the warfighter. This type of speed in our acquisition system is essential. It allows us to field capabilities rapidly to compete against the threats we face. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress is an American, long-range, subsonic, jet-powered strategic bomber. The B-52 was designed and built by Boeing, which has continued to provide support and upgrades. It's been operated by the United States Air Force USAF, since the 1950s. Superior performance at high subsonic speeds and relatively low operating costs have kept the B-52 in service despite the advent of more advanced aircraft, including the variable geometry B-1B Lancer and the stealth B-2 Spirit. After being upgraded between 2013 and 2015, it's supposed to serve into the 2040s. B-52 is powered by Pratt & Whitney turbojet engines. The eight engines of the B-52 are paired in pods and suspended by four pylons beneath and forward of the wing's leading edge. It has a typical combat range of more than 8,800 miles that's 14,080 kilometers, without aerial refueling. The massive range enables B-52 to take on strategic bombing missions. The powerful engines also enable B-52 to carry up to 70,000 pounds that's 32,000 kilograms of weapons. Viewers may note that in June 2018, the Air Force announced it was looking to purchase new pylons for the B-52 to carry multiple, unspecified, 20,000-pound class weapons. It's now known that the pylon will be used for aero. Depending on the exact size of the aero, B-52 may be one of the only aircraft that will be able to carry it. B-52 is currently a vulnerable platform because of its large radar cross-section and slow speed. It will find it difficult to penetrate advanced air defense system. But with Aero, it will have a weapon that can be launched from standoff distances without getting inside the engagement envelope of enemy air defenses. As per the changing dynamics, America is aggressively looking to field hypersonic weapons. It's pursuing the development through both the stated path. U.S. Navy's F-35C Joint Strike Fighter may soon be armed with hypersonic missile. Lockheed Martin has revealed a concept variant of its air-launched hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept hypersonic missile, or HAWC, as a weapon option for F-35C. Viewers can check the video on the above card. The U.S. is lagging in hypersonic weapon space especially against Russia. But with considerable attention and funding being provided, it's expected to catch up quickly. It will be interesting to see the progress and how the tech matures over time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.